Well, it's springtime, and you know what that means. It's floating worm time. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before that video gets going, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and punch the notification bell, and then head on over to our blog site, thebassfishinglife.com. We put new content up there three times a week as well. Thank you so very much. Well, it's getting to be that time of year when the floating worm really shines. Now the key is that water temperature is going to be kind of in the mid 50s getting close to 60. You can kind of gauge it by that a little bit. But really what you're looking for is when you start to see those cruising bass and you've got some of the smaller males up and they're looking for sights, starting to fan out sights, that is when a floating worm is absolutely dynamite. Now here on my lake, it's not quite that time yet, but I know for a lot of you, it is, especially if you're a little farther south in that mid-region of the United States, it is definitely go time for a floating worm. So that is why I wanted to talk about it today and the way I rig it and present it and some of the different color options that are available. And especially if you're kind of new to bass angling, you may not have heard of a floating worm and some of the different colors they use are pretty shocking. You'll get a surprise by looking at them. So anyway, the first thing is definitely, are you starting to see bass shallow? And I mean ultra shallow. Are those males, those buck bass, are they up running around and, and looking for those spawning places? A lot of them are just gonna be cruisers, okay? They may not really be setting in any one area. They're just gonna be cruising down the shoreline. And when you see that, you can get that floating worm out and you know it's time. Now, as far as color goes, uh, in this ultra clear water that I have here, I like to use just a standard white, okay? And I can see this forever far away. Um, also in natural water, especially when the bluegills are up on the beds, I'll start to use some colors that are more bluegill related as far as matching what a bluegill looks like. Uh, but some of your traditional floating worm colors are going to be methylate, um, hot, pink, the hot chartreuse types of colors. And a lot of anglers, um, they, you know, they're like, well, those shock colors will really get the bass turned on and come attack it. And yes, there is definitely some validity to the idea of a shock color, but I am in the opinion that those bright colors are there because we as anglers can see them and see when the bass inhale them. When you're float worm fishing, seeing the bait, seeing the worm is key. And that is where some of those methylates and those hot pinks and chartreuses really help out. And even in this clear water, this white one that I've got right here, I can just see this a mile away. And it's so helpful when you are fishing with a floating worm. Now, as far as the equipment goes, uh, this here is pretty much like a standard jig rod or a worm rod that you would Texas rig with. Uh, it's a medium heavy power rating and it's got a moderate fast tip to it. Uh, just got a regular high speed reel and most of my bait casters I've got braid to floral. Okay, I do have a fluorocarbon leader on here. When you're fishing a floating worm, sinking is definitely what you want that line to do. Now, as far as the rigging of the worm goes, I just have a weightless Texas rig here. This is just an offset worm hook. I do have the majority of the hook in the plastic. It's not really out the back because a floating worm is something I'm going to really throw up into some heavy stuff and I want it to come through that cover and the weeds. So that is pretty much the setup that I have. Some anglers do like to put a nail in their floating worm. And if you put a nail in there, it is best to put it in this part of the worm here so you have more of a slight nose down or a horizontal drop. This is not a presentation where you're really looking for that backwards tail drop. So you can adjust the weight based on the conditions that you have. Maybe you need a little more weight because it's windy out 
whatever it might be, you want some, you know, some quicker sync to it. Um, as far as the actual presentation, you're going to be shallow. Okay, is I mean it's it's not unusual when you're float worm fishing, be targeting bass that are in less than a foot of water. So I will just throw that out there, okay, up into the shallows, and I use a standard twitch twitch pause retrieve, almost like a soft jerk bait. So I'll just twitch twitch, leave it sit a second, twitch twitch, leave it sit, and that's exactly what my retrieve is going to look like. And with this bright white. I can really see it. I mean, such a distance I can still see this. Now you may have noticed I'm throwing this weightless on bait cast gear, okay? Um, I have my reel set pretty loose. If this is something that you're not really comfortable with, by all means you can go ahead and use spinning gear for this presentation. Uh, I just like to use some bait cast equipment because I have better accuracy with it and if I see um, a little pocket up in some brush or whatever and I really want to pitch that thing up in there shallow I do much better with bait cast equipment but you can fish it on spinning gear as far as the hook set goes this is where it's very similar to let's say frog fishing or when you're bed fishing sight fishing bass when they're sitting locked onto the bed when you've got these bright colored lures like this and then all of a sudden you see that bright lure disappear you don't want to set the hook immediately it's super easy to see that white worm or that methylate worm just vanish and then boom just set the hook right away and most of the time you're going to miss that fish so when you've got this bait out and you're fishing it back I'm just doing a twitch twitch pause and then all of a sudden I see this bright worm just disappear you can either do like a little silent count in your head pause one one thousand two one thousand or I like to wait until I feel just a touch of pressure and then I set the hook and with a floating worm I set the hook down this isn't one of those over the head type of a hook sets that you might use like when you're when you're jig fishing I set down sweep it down to the side like this and if you wait until you feel just a touch of pressure and then side sweep down with your hook set you're going to have a very 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 high hookup ratio when you are float worm fishing so that is definitely important it's so easy when you see that bright colored lure vanish to just immediately react and set the hook and you'll miss almost 100 percent of those bites now earlier I talked about using a floating worm to mimic bluegills. The bluegill spawn is after the bass spawn. So it's like when those bass are spawning, the bluegills are up there and just raiding the nest and just driving, driving those bass crazy. And then it reverses, okay? The bluegills get up in the spawning beds and then the bass go up and feed on them. Now when you find a big spawning area in some of the pockets and coves that you see with bluegill beds, there will be hundreds and hundreds of bluegill beds up there. You may not always see bass actively up on top of those beds, okay? But I promise you, I promise you, promise you that they are nearby. They could be just off into deeper water. They could be waiting for a low light period to come up and feed. But that is where twitching a floating worm in and around bluegill beds. And here in my part of northern Illinois, that is pretty much religiously those first couple weeks of June, okay, is when that happens. So, but that a floating worm on bluegill beds is so, so good. Definitely worth your time and effort. So, just to sum up real quick, when you start to see bass coming up shallow, uh, it will be when that water is, you know, 55 and up, or you've got longer daylight, okay? There's a lot of discussion out there that bass trigger more off the amount of daylight as opposed to water temperature, but that's a, that's a video for another time. So when you start seeing bass moving shallow, get the floating worm out, pick a color of your choice. If you've got more stained and muddy water, probably those methylates and chartreuses, hot pinks will be better off. 
clear water, I have a lot of success with just the white. Um, so that's what I use with that. Just a twitch, twitch, pause, and then make sure you've got, you wait for some pressure, wait to feel that fish, go ahead and take that worm, and then set your hook down with a side sweep, and I promise you that you're going to have some blast this spring, because fishing a floating worm is a ton of fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, all of bass fishing is fun, but this is really a lot of fun and I think you're going to enjoy it. So if you've never tried it before, go ahead and get out there, buy a couple bags of some real nice colors and good luck. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.